hi guys hope you're all doing well welcome back to our channel and in this video we are going to talk about windows autopilot a feature that's available with windows 10 that can help you transition a factory state device to a business ready state device by following the process termed as zero touch deployment now zero touch deployment is not new we have been doing this with configuration manager combined with mdt but the fact is that in these kind of solutions there are multiple on-prem resources that you have to deploy whereas windows autopilot is a complete cloud native solution and there is no on-prem deployment required so the core agenda of this video will be knowing what is windows autopilot how exactly it works what are the supported version of windows with which this feature can be implemented what are the benefits of using this feature and what are the basic network requirements now before we go ahead and talk about how exactly windows autopilot works let's take a step back and understand what and all we were doing traditionally and which process are still followed in large scale enterprises so let's start from procurement itself wherein we contact different OEM providers to get different machines which have different hardware configurations, right? But every enterprise has a security and compliance standard wherein a certain build should exist on a specific device. So what we do is we get those machines imaged or re-imaged with the specific OS that should be used as per the security and compliance standards of our enterprise. Now, this is step number one, okay? The next step is to get these machines joined to Active Directory so that the first layer of security in terms of group policy objects and restrictions should reach these devices, as well as any user that exists in the Active Directory should be able to use this device. The next step is to get these devices onboarded to an endpoint manager solution so we can get the right set of applications deployed as well as security updates or patches deployed to these machines. The fourth stage, the most important one, is to get the machine onboarded to an endpoint protection solution. Now this can be scoped to either AV or EDR or there are n number of methods of uh, having endpoint protection deployed but this is something which is adhered in most of the enterprises now this is a typical four stage process that's been done in every enterprise and once the device is ready we can actually hand over these devices to the respective users so that they can use their corporate id but in a nutshell what exactly we are doing is we are transitioning a factory state device into a business ready state device right but the fact is that there are multiple process that we are doing we are building a custom OS image then we are joining that machine to AD then the machine is getting onboarded to an endpoint manager solution and then lastly to an endpoint protection solution with multiple resources deployed on-prem now the fact is that what if I say that this entire process can be done or can be automated with windows autopilot now the fact is that you may have a solution or for your enterprise this particular process is already automated but the fact is that we have to think about scalability and we have to think about reliability and how easily we can achieve a specific use case so windows autopilot in a nutshell help you with this particular use case wherein it can get a factory device transitioned to a business ready state device with absolutely no admin intervention now let me explain how things are going to work if you have windows autopilot deployed or if you have windows autopilot configured for your enterprise now think about a scenario wherein i have onboarded a specific machine to windows autopilot and i got that machine shipped to you the first step is to unbox that machine and then just switch it on okay now let's talk about some of the features that are binded with os itself that means out of the box experience the moment you will switch on this machine the first prompt for you to select either language or region okay the next one will be selecting the keyboard layout and the third one and the most important one is the network setting wherein you are giving internet access to this particular machine 
Now, once this machine has an appropriate internet connectivity, there is a feature that exists in Windows 10 that will allow this machine to contact these specific endpoints, which are Windows Autopilot deployment service endpoints. Now, whenever this communication happens between the machine and these endpoints, there are certain checks that happens under the hood. The first one is whether this machine is applicable or scoped for any Windows Autopilot update or profile or not. And the other one is Windows Zero Day Update. Now, when I say Windows Autopilot Update, it's the update that's required for Autopilot to work appropriately right because windows autopilot is also a service or in a nutshell there is a service in windows 10 itself which is responsible to get the device transitioned from factory state to a business ready state and there will be regular updates for that as well now when it comes to the question when these updates are released for windows autopilot update there is a change that is replicated every fourth Tuesday of the month, whereas Windows Zero Day Update can be released anytime. Because these are critical driver updates that must exist on a specific machine, right? Now, let's say this request, uh, which this particular machine has made to the respective endpoints, and there was a valid autopilot profile as well as autopilot update exist which has to be sent as a response to this machine as well as there is a valid windows zero day patch update also available which has to be installed so what will happen that this machine will go ahead and install both of these updates right now since Windows zero day patch update is a change that happening at the OS layer itself this machine would require a restart OK, but the question comes that now when the machine will get restarted, it already knows to which endpoint manager instance it has to go. Now, what do I mean by this? That I have manually onboarded this machine by uploading the hardware ID and a hardware hash of this machine in endpoint manager of my tenant. Right. And that's the reason why this machine knows that there is a specific tenant to which it has to contact. So now what will happen that once the machine will get restarted, we can actually suppress these settings and some of other settings as well, which are a part of out of the box experience. Likewise, allowing the user to accept Microsoft licensing terms. Now, once this stage has reached and the machine has restarted, the next prompt will be to enter username and password and what credentials will be used in this case will be the Azure AD credential because any of the Microsoft online service would rely on Azure AD for the identity management right at this particular stage now if you will try to relate this particular step with the step that we were doing with our on-prem solutions the machine was getting joined to Active Directory. With Windows Autopilot, you can also have a configuration in place wherein the machine will get onboarded as hybrid Azure AD join. That's also a different use case that I will be covering. But for this particular scope, understand at this particular stage, the machine is getting joined to Azure Active Directory. Now, let's say you have proper Intune licenses that are assigned to the user and you have enabled automatic enrollment. What will happen in the same session, the machine will also get onboarded to Intune. In a nutshell, if you will try to relate this, at this particular stage, the machine is getting onboarded to an endpoint manager solution. Now, since we know that Microsoft Intune has the capability to push device compliance, policies, configuration, security patches, GPOs, as well as you can use Microsoft Intune for app deployment as well. So it's moreover related to the capabilities that we were achieving with SCCM on-prem. You can actually do that with Intune itself. That means your new endpoint manager portal, which is endpoint.microsoft.com. Now, since Microsoft Intune is an endpoint manager portal, you can actually go ahead and deploy the settings which are required to get this machine onboarded to our endpoint protection solution, which in case of Microsoft will be MDATP. Okay, so now if you will try to relate this use case with 
the use case that we have discussed about on-prem environment in a nutshell a factory state device is actually getting transitioned to a business state device okay and in this particular scenario you would need windows to be available on the device which was actually happening either with the network boot in your on-prem environment or with a manual imaging of a specific machine now once this entire process is completed you can actually hand over this machine to the respective users and they can use their azure ad sign-in to use this specific machine in a nutshell any machine that's been onboarded with the help of autopilot will look something like this so this is a machine which I have onboarded to Windows Autopilot and I got the machine restarted. This machine has a valid Autopilot profile and as you can see, this will be the user experience. User will get prompted to enter their corporate credentials and that's it. From here, the entire process is automated. So this was about knowing how exactly Windows Autopilot works, but some of the key points which I would like to address here the first one is no on-prem resource deployment is required because Windows Autopilot is a cloud native feature. If I talk about a definition, it's a collection of technologies that can help you transition a factory state device into a business ready state device. Now let's talk about what would be the benefits of using Windows Autopilot. The first one is there is no admin interaction required on the device itself that means you can just get the uh, hardware id onboarded to your endpoint manager portal and that's it you can ship the device to your user now depending upon the profiles that you have created depending upon the intune configuration that you have done for that particular user respective applications restrictions group or c objects will get deployed to the machine the moment user tries to sign it the next thing is zero touch deployment itself that means there is nothing that needs to be done from user perspective as well because the user is just signing in and everything is getting automated and the fact is that you can have two types of deployments from user access perspective the first one is whether you want the user to have admin access on that machine or not or whether the user should get standard user permission now as I've said before that it's not only about getting the machine joined to Azure AD, you can have a deployment process in place wherein Windows Autopilot will get the machine onboarded as a hybrid Azure AD device. Now, since in both the cases, the machine is getting joined to Azure AD, the machines will get automatically onboarded to Intune provided you have done that configuration and then Intune will help the machine to get the onboarded to MDA to be to your endpoint protection solution. Now the Windows version with which this feature is supported is Pro, Pro Education, Pro for Workstation, Enterprise Education and Enterprise 2019 LTSC. Now it's always my recommendation to refer to the vendor specific articles when it comes to network configuration but there are certain things which I would like to highlight and that will help you in terms of understanding how exactly Windows Autopilot works okay so the first one is Windows Autopilot deployment service now these are the endpoints which you must allow in your corporate network let's say you are uh, giving the machines to users when they are coming to corporate network in that case they will be using your internal network so make sure you're taking care of all the network requirements now when it comes to the official document there are multiple places which you have to refer to and which you have to make sure that the same endpoints or IP addresses are allowed in your internal network I will be sharing the official documentation in the description section but this table is just to make you understand how different things are used for Windows Autopilot deployment the next one is Windows activation so you have to make sure all the endpoints that are accessed during the activation process should be whitelisted. Now it's very obvious that your machine is getting Azure Active Directory joined, so you have to make sure all the Office 365 IP addresses and URLs should be whitelisted. One more example that I can highlight here that will be more relatable to Intune that I can have app deployment in place wherein Office 365 is also getting installed on the same machine on which the user tried signing in. That means a Windows Autopilot onboarded machine before 
the user launched the home screen of that particular machine, Office 365 is already installed. So in that case, all the URLs of Office 365 application will also be accessed. The same goes for Windows Update. NTP is not new. It is usually allowed in most of the enterprise, but the most important one is hybrid Azure AD join, right? So let's say you have a federated environment. Apart from whitelisting all the endpoints that are required for device registration, make sure your ADFS link is also available or your ADFS endpoint is also available for the machine which is trying to get onboarded to Windows Autopilot. Now the last thing that I would like to talk about is the methods that are available with Windows Autopilot. The first one is Windows Autopilot user driven mode with the one which we have just discussed. The other one is Windows Autopilot self deploying mode. In this particular mode, there is a local account that's get created on that particular machine. And then there is a different set of configuration that you have to do so that you can hand over that machine to the respective users. Then you have Windows Autopilot reset wherein let's say as a user, I'm using a machine, I can just reset that particular machine or I can just get that machine reset from the respective IT team and then the same machine can be handed over to a different user. Now, once the different user logs in, all the scoped policy when it comes to configuration compliance or app deployment will get scope to that user's sign-in request and then the machine will be ready as per the configuration that's been done for that particular user now pre-provisioning is the new word that's or is the new term that's been given to white glove feature that is something which we will be discussing in a lot more detail in a different video altogether and the last one is windows autopilot for existing devices now when i say existing devices this is more over scoped to windows 8 or windows 7 devices where you have to get them updated to windows 10 first and then you can just use Windows Autopilot feature because as I've said before, this is something which comes with Windows 10. So this was all about knowing the theoretical part of how Windows Autopilot works. Let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this particular video. We have discussed about Windows Autopilot. What are the benefits of using this feature? What are the supported version of Windows? How exactly it works? And what are the basic network requirements? In the next video, we are going to talk about Windows Autopilot configuration and the method that we will be focusing will be user-driven mode. So if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.